Yeah, so um, yeah, my name is Brett. Um, I'm into uh, flying drones and actually into all sorts of gadgets, but particularly drones. I guess it started when I was about five or six, way before drones came out, because I'm not young. But uh, I used to make uh, little flying machines. I'd take the ice cream lid, cut it up into a propeller. I'd use a soldering iron to make a propeller. I'd get a little tiny toy engine, battery engine. I'd connect it up, and with some wires, I would fly it around inside my, my room. But yeah, as soon as um, toy helicopters came about, I started flying them probably about 15 years ago. So I flew uh, remote control helicopters. And then the drones came out. First of all, I bought little tiny ones just to get into it, get a feel for it. Then I bought a DJI Spark, which is quite famous. It kind of started the whole DJI revolution. And the DJI Spark is like a, an affordable consumer high quality drone. So I, I got used to that. Basically, it's, it's a GPS drone. So when you fly it, it just waits for you to do something. Even if it's windy, it just waits. It can manage the wind. So I got into photography and videography, just flying that drone around. I have really started to enjoy it. So that probably started about maybe three and a half, four years ago. And then I started uploading a few uh, videos to YouTube. The channel's called Gizmo Drones, if you want to check it out. So um, I tried to do one probably once a month or something like that to start with. And over a period of time, I got a better drone. I got the DJI Mavic Air, which is a nice portable, high quality drone. So I flew that for about a year or so. Then I decided to get a Mavic 2 Pro, um, which is a more of a pro consumer, high quality drone. And I got into uh, videography in a much bigger way because with that sort of drone, you can record in log. A log is basically got a lot more colors, a lot more dynamic range. So I had to learn how to do that. So I had to learn how to use um, high-end uh, software. So I started with different packages, but at the moment I'm using DaVinci Resolve, which is doing a fantastic job. Um, mind you, I did buy probably maybe 20, 30 drones. So I'm only like telling about the better ones. I've got so many drones at home and I've got so many little racing drones that you fly around the house or in the garden. Um, I've got ones with goggles. So I just love everything to do with flying. I bought a, a new drone about a year, just over a year ago, the Autel Evo 2 Pro. It's a bigger drone compared to the Mavic 2 Pro and also had a 6K camera or has a 6K camera versus the 4K camera. So I've really enjoyed flying that drone because it's got a better camera for night flying or for low light flying. It's a bigger drone, so it seems to handle the wind. And I also find it more reliable. It's not impacted by things like, um, you had this problem with drones where you might get magnetic interference. And that's usually caused by metal on the ground or a large metal structure. And sometimes a drone gets confused and you lose control because it suddenly doesn't know which way north or south is, and it'll simply take off. And uh, even with the DJI drones, once in a while, they'll do something crazy, and you've got to somehow recover it and bring it back. Well, with the Autel, um, I've never had a problem. It's you know fantastic. I never need to calibrate it. Wherever I go, it just simply works. So I love that drone. But I have a, a small range of smaller drones. Um, you know, in recent times, in the last year and a half, uh, a lot of the, uh, the air control authorities around the world um, have put some restrictions on drones. For example, in Europe, I believe you can really only fly a drone that's 250 grams or less um, without a license. And uh, in Australia, you can also do the same. You can fly a drone 250 grams or less without a license. So I have a few of those as well, um, just to play with. And with that sort of drone, with a smaller drone, um, you can also fly closer to the airport because with a drone, no matter which country you're in, there are restrictions about how close you can fly to a manned or controlled airport. Yeah, so um, I'm actually, my real job is actually in IT. So I actually work with a high tech company providing uh, IT network and security solutions to, whoops, I'm kind of stuck with companies um, in Australia. I was looking after Asia for a while as well. But uh, I do love flying drones so much that I ended up getting my uh, um, pilot's license. So I got that actually January last year, which is January 2020. Yeah, January 2020. 
it's not cheap it's uh, surprisingly difficult um, basically you have to learn what a, a real pilot would learn with respect to weather airports reading um, air, air, aircraft maps uh, knowing all the rules and regulations and they're very strict about uh, where you can fly a drone and how you can fly a drone particularly around people and uh, and anything that could cause an accident basically um, so I got that license last year which I'm very proud of and since then I've started doing some commercial work uh, just basically doing work for people that have seen my channel they like my videos um, I do have a website now which is gizmodrones.com.au but uh, yes I'm pretty much just doing the work on the side which is good because it's usually done in the morning which is sunrise before work or sunset which is usually after work um, and because I live in the city, a lot of the work is just literally across the road or around the corner. It's just so easy for me just to duck out, grab some shots and uh, do what, uh, what is needed. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've been very proud that I've been able to turn what really is a hobby uh, into something that's um, quite, quite good, quite professional. Not to say I'm fantastic, I'm still learning. I mean, I'm still learning about you know, drones and photography. It's a bit like golf or anything that's difficult. It takes a long time to become really good. Yes, it's easy to get it up in the air and put the record button on, grab some video or grab a photo, and you might be lucky sometimes getting some good shots. But to do it consistently and to fly smoothly and to capture the correct you know, balance of the shot, it takes practice. Everyone, anybody can do it, but it just takes practice. You've got more people watching your YouTube, YouTube um, channel. Yeah, so. More people who like your job. Well, that's the funny thing, because when I started, when I look back at my first videos, you know, three, four years ago, they're not that good. <laughs> I have to admit, I look at them and I think, should I delete them? No, I leave it there because it's history, right? It's where I started. Even though I could actually fly back then, it was terrible. You know, I was flying all over the place, I was going too fast, um, had the wrong, you know, the, the, the gimbal, which is the balance camera, would kind of jolt a bit. And these things you just learn just after doing, you really actually have to do a lot of videos because the videos teach you what works and what doesn't work. And um, you know, as I said, I'm still learning, but I am definitely getting better. So over the last few years, my subscribers have got up to about, I think it's about, I don't know, 1,300 or thereabouts. Um, and at the moment, it's probably adding you know, maybe uh, you know, 50 to 100 a month. So it's kind of like ramping up. And the sort of people that watch my videos are typically other drone enthusiasts. You know, they've bought a drone, they want to see what other people are doing. They kind of do their own videos and then they think, okay, how can I improve my video? So they kind of uh, copy each other. So they'll copy the sort of shots, the sort of angles, um, the way you kind of uh, cut it up with editing. Um, I mean, one thing that does surprise me is that, you know, some people don't improve. <laughs> They could fly a drone for years and their latest video looks the same as their first video. I think with me, not that I'm perfect, but I've always tried to improve. Every video I do, every time I put the drone up in the air, I think to myself, what can I do better this time? And I think that's probably one of the reasons why I've done quite well in terms of uh, getting to a point where I'm quite good. Um, but yeah, as I said, I've got a long way to go. I've only got experience with the drones I've got. I haven't flown the very big drones, which is what they use in cinema and film. Um, so I'd love to do that one day. But one thing I have observed with all the different drones I fly, they pretty much are all the same anyway. They all feel the same. Yes, some might feel a bit smoother and whatever, but as you get better, you just simply adapt to it. It's like driving a car. You just jump in. Yep, you can do it. Um, which drone do you like? Well, look, let me show you the drones I've got because I brought a couple today just to show you. I have a lot more than this, but um, I'll show you what's in my bag, because that, that's probably pretty interesting. This bag I take wherever I go. It's got my favourite drone in it. Now, they're about to release a new one pretty soon. In fact, uh, DJI is releasing the Mavic 2 Pro. Oh, sorry, you're not recording this, right? Yeah, so this is my, my favourite drone at the moment. I may replace it in the coming months, because um, they're about to release an, a new version. Uh, in fact, they're releasing... Um, I think it's four new models at the moment. But let me show you this one anyway, it's, it's quite good. So this one's called the Ortel Evo 2 Pro. Um, 
It's around 1.1 kilos. It's, it's foldable as you can see. I've never smashed it. In fact, I haven't smashed any of my drones for quite a few years. I have smashed a couple in the beginning, but uh, not for a long time. But basically, uh, that's the drone. And this is a really nice drone. It's got a, a 6K camera, and it's got a, um, detachable filters so that you can, if you're into photography, instead of just using clear glass, which comes with it, you can put on different, what they call ND filters. Oh, here comes the rain. Um, yeah, so basically there's different filters. And I like to fly with in manual mode. So I've got some more here. And I've got another eight in the bag, depending on what I'm doing. Um, but with this drone, although it's got sensors around it, I actually never use them. It's got um, automatic avoidance sensors. It's got 12. Two at the front, a couple underneath, ultrasonics, lights, more sensors and more sensors, more sensors. Oh, these are cameras actually, these are all cameras around there. So if you put it in autonomous mode, even if you're going to run into a person or a tree or something, it'll stop. Or you can have it automatically go around it if you want. Um, so it uses, um, I'll just show you the batteries. I've got a lot of batteries. So you can see all my, I carry two phones. I have a, a normal phone which I use, but I, I've got a large, very bright phone which I use as my main phone. And I've got a backup one in case I need it. But uh, each of these batteries, they claim you can fly for 40 minutes, but in reality, you don't want to fly to the last bit of battery. So I tend to land at about 28 minutes or thereabouts. Um, so it goes in like, like that. But, um, yeah, what, what else is in the bag? I'll just quickly show you. You've got the uh, controller. So for those that don't fly drones, this is how you control it. I've got a little cover here. So this one has actually got a display. Um, so you can actually fly it without the phone. And actually the image of the camera will appear here. And then there's the antennas. This flies for up to nine kilometers away. So it can go a long way. So basically, um, if I were to turn on the drone, it would connect. But normally what I do is I, I put my phone... Oops! Nearly lost my phone. My phone goes on like that. I turn my phone on, which I'm not going to do right now, but I turn it on. I connect the cable up. It all, it all turns on, and once it's ready to go, I take off, and then I, I use these uh, joysticks to control the drone in terms of direction, height and speed and so on. So that's, uh, that's how you control a drone and it does a great job. But I'll show you what else is in my bag just so you know. I always carry uh, spare propellers just in case I do hit something. I haven't needed to use that yet but um, spare cables, lots of memory cards. It uses memory cards and I carry maybe there's about eight, eight in here, some spare ones. I've got to carry those as well these days so I've got them too. <laughs> just in case. Um, I've got the ND filters which I mentioned before. You know, if you want to do a proper white balance, you know, you can use the little cards like this for doing your white balance check because as the lighting changes, the white balance changes. And if you want to do consistent uh, editing, this helps. Um, and then I've got uh, my Sony camera. So, uh, you know, if I need to add some additional footage, I can use that, like a Sony Z, Z, uh, ZV-1, which is a very nice camera. Let's put that away because it's raining. We can even go undercover if you want. Um, what do you want to say? Keep going? No, no. And no problem for you. No, no problems for me. So, uh, but that's not it because you, there's a lot more that I need to carry. Um, I've got an Osmo Pocket which is very, also very good for additional footage. Um, you know, very, very, very good um, camera. This is the original one. I'm gonna get the Osmo Pocket 2 uh, shortly because um, I think it's worth, worth getting. Um, but that's that. And then I've got some additional filters for that, some cables and some lights. Quite often I'll fly until it's dark and I might be in a, very, in a spot that has no lights. So I always carry torches. 
And then um, I've got some other stuff in the bag. So this bag has got so much stuff. You know, if you're in a spot, you know, like if I took off here, you don't need a pad. But you might be on, in the, some area that's grass or even muddy or something or long grass. So I would use um, this takeoff pad, the launch pad, and I put it on the ground and that way the drone's got clearance. I've got another one here for a small drone. So if I go have another drone, which I've got here actually here as well. Um, when I do commercial work, I have to wear this. And I have some other things as well which I use. Here's my drones. So uh, I wear that for safety. So when you're flying a drone commercially, you need to wear this so that people know who's flying the drone and they can uh, contact you if they need, need to. But normally when I do a commercial job, I have um, barriers, cones, and I've got an A-frame, a safety frame, safety sign that says drone in operation. I also have some uh, attachments. So this is for the Osmo Pocket. I use the second phone for that as well. And if I need to uh, connect the Sony or to extend or put the uh, either camera on, a, on the ground, I can use this. This extends as well. So basically I've got everything I need to be, uh, you know, to do some sort of film project. But just to show you, um, oh, I have some large tripods which I use as well, and I've got proper lights and things, but like when I do small jobs, I just try to be as portable as possible. So I'll take a small tripod if I need it for, for something. Um, and then if it's an area where there's a lot of people, um, or maybe it, it could be dangerous, or if it's uh, within five and a half kilometers of the airport, you need to fly a smaller drone. So that's what this is for. Um, this is the, the latest uh, DJI um, uh, Mini 2, which uh, is a very small um, drone, 249 grams, which is just under the legal limit of 250 grams. So you can see there, 249 grams. It's got a pretty good camera. It's not as good as the Autel, because the Autel is a one inch camera. And I'd have to check what this is, but this would be much, much smaller. And maybe a third of an inch or something, maybe half, but yeah, very small um, camera. So basically, it doesn't work as well in low light, but still does a fantastic job, uh, and you can produce some great 4K footage. Um, amazing, this drone is quite amazing in the wind. It can fly in pretty much uh, up to 20 kilometer, 30 kilometer winds. Um, flight time is around 25 minutes, and I carry quite a few batteries. I've got six batteries for this one. I bought three today to show you, but these are the batteries that go on there. So you can do uh, quite a bit of flying with that. Um, this is the controller for this one. Basically you have to put the joysticks or the little sticks on here, they screw on, just like so. Put your phone in there and then you can fly it. There's the other one there. So that's a great drone. So if you're going to get into the, the profession of uh, flying drones for work, I would definitely recommend these two drones and if you don't want to go for Autel, I think the uh, DJI Mavic 2 Pro is definitely the one to go for or perhaps the Air 2S which is a fairly new drone, a bit smaller. One of the benefits of the Mavic 2 Pro and the Autel 2 Pro is that the aperture is controllable. Um, so if you're a photography kind of person, it's great being able to control the aperture for the lighting because then you get perfect lighting no matter what it's like. Whereas um, if you have fixed aperture, like you have with the uh, DJI Air, Air 2S, Mavic Mini, basically um, you don't always have fine control over the lighting because it's fixed aperture and you have to change the ND filter or put it on auto mode. And, um, but you'll still get good results no matter which drone you go for. Um, afterwards to keep it clean. Um, you can also use it to inspect the propellers because if the propellers have got a crack, it, they may split and break off in flight in which case it'll come crashing down or it'll just land. And it may land in a bad spot. You may not be able to recover it. It could be in the water. I do a lot of flying over water. Um, in the beginning, I was scared of birds. You know, maybe it might hit the bird and come down. But to be honest, um, I really haven't had any problems with birds ever. A bird has never brought my drone down. 
and I fly with birds all the time. This particular drone, the, the hum of the propellers doesn't seem to bother the birds as much. I find that the smaller drones seem to upset the birds a bit more because it's a bit of a whiny pitch. Um, but this one has a low hum and the birds just ignore it for some reason, which is great as a pilot. So I think that's good to go. So, uh, so what, what we do, just in case you want to see, is um, you, you power up the controller first. You always do the controller first. The phone, if you've used it with the controller before, should recognize that the controller is turned on, which it has. You then say connect. Um, you could go straight into the app, which I normally do, or you could wait. You can power up the drone and then wait, but typically I'll just uh, press camera, go and put the, um, the drone on. Just hold the button down for a few seconds. You can see the lights come on. And this will tell me if I need to move it because it will come up with a compass calibration issue if it's no good there. So we're just waiting for a connection. We've got a connection. Okay, so I'm lucky. I found the right spot. No um, compass calibration issues. So this is the histogram. So basically when I like to record um, video or photos, I put it into manual mode. So you can see I've got it here in manual mode. I've chosen 4K, there's different resolutions. I usually cho um, choose 30 frames a second, but you can go to 60 if you want. Choose your file format. This is the manual mode, but you've got different options. Now I've got an ND filter on there now, and you can see the histogram is okay. It's maybe a little bit dark, but I can fix that through the, um, the aperture control, which I'm doing here with the f-stop. So I can actually improve the light. Um, but basically, I've got the zebra settings turned on, so if I'm overexposed, you'll see some zebra uh, lines on the screen. At the moment, there's no zebra lines, so probably that's about right. And then you can choose your shutter speed. Normally, when you do a video work, you try to double the frame rate as the shutter speed. So I've got a frame rate of 30, so that my shutter speed would be 1 over 60. You can do other shutter speeds. The reason why they do that is that things that have motion will look smooth, such as water. Um, but I do, when I'm doing low light work, I'll actually reduce that to 1 over 30. And um, the other thing I've got here is uh, the ISO. So you can change uh, the light levels and also the, the, um, change the, uh, the white balance. I normally pick 5700K or manual white balance, but you can change all that if you want. And then you've got the various settings for the drone, how, how fast you want to fly. Um, this drone can go up to 90 kilometers away. You can set you know, how far it can go, the distance limit. There's all these different settings that you can choose, which I won't go through here. Um, so basically, it says I can fly for 20, even though the battery can do 40 minutes, based on my settings, I can fly for 28 minutes here. I've got the avoidance turn on, so the green bit says that if I take off, I won't be able to hit anyone. But once I get up in the air, I always turn that off. So to, uh, you've got the map here. So to take off, so basically it says I'm good to go. I've got GPS lock. You do need to get GPS lock before you take off so that it can um, be stable in the air and you can control it easily. If you lose GPS, then you have to be a really good pilot and fly it manually. Um, if you've never done that before, it's very scary. But if you have flown you know, um, cheaper drones or FPV drones, that's not a problem. You just take over manually and you control it. Luckily, I can fly manually, so if I do lose control, I'm okay to bring it back. So to take off, basically I just hit the takeoff button. Normally you stand back, just in case things go wrong. And it all looks good. You, you wait a minute. Um, what I normally do is, um, unless I, I know the particular shot I'm after, I'll just normally put record on and then edit later. If I do something regularly enough, I'll definitely um, just put the camera on when I need it. But for now, for today, I'll just put the camera on. One thing I will show you is that the screen has got the rule of thirds. So I always put these lines on. So I either have the horizon centered or I have it on the top third. And, that, and from a balance point of view, 
that looks good. Now, if you find that the horizon's not level, you can, can um, correct that through the settings. But generally, I will do that in editing anyway. I'll fix it in editing. So now, now we're good to go. So we can, um, we've got recording on. Um, actually, you'll be able to include, include this video. I'll just center it to here. And we'll just race down there now. So now it's um, yep. So just stopping it for a moment, you can see it's uh, 210 meters away, and the height is 53 meters. So that's it. And if we turn it around, you'll be able to see the city. So yeah, I'll give you this footage so you can include it. So I kind of fix the horizon so it looks nice. And uh, what we can do is just get some shots here. I'll just keep going up a bit higher. Now you're supposed to keep line of sight. So I've got, luckily this drone is big and I can see it really easily. Um, it's straight up there. I'm now running at 70 meters high. And uh, there's the ship. Yep, so that's a good shot. And what I'll do is I'll bring it back now. So just turn it around. You've also got um, a little dial here to control the gimbal. So that brings the camera up and down. So I can bring the camera down. So I can bring the camera up. And when you get really good, you can control the gimbal and the direction of the drone at the same time. It takes a lot of practice to get it smooth. Typically what I do is if I really want to take good control, I normally fly like this with the thumbs, but if I want really good control, I pinch it. And then I can then get really, really fine control. And I can do some very, very smooth flying, um, very advanced flying. But it takes a bit of practice. There's a little bit of wind up there. You can feel it. So now so I can just control it a bit here and move it. So although the uh, the sticks seem to go in like four directions, left, right, east, west, I actually control it in 360 mode. A completely, completely smooth um, control of the sticks so that you can um, get some nice smooth movement. So that's us there, and I, I got that perfectly centered in the building, just through that smooth control. Um, yeah, but the drone has got lots of fancy features, which I rarely use. You can go into panorama, hyperlapse, orbit, dynamic track, tripod. The only modes I use are manual flight or precision flight. So if I'm flying in a garden and there's literally no space either side of the drone, I'll put it in precision mode and that goes into very slow speed and I can control the, the um, speed of the drone in every direction. So this is like the default setting but I can change it from 7 kilometers an hour to whatever I need up to 18. So this is when you're doing very fine control. It actually moves very slowly and perfect for um, any kind of tight work, particularly if you're around people. Yeah, so that's that drone. Um, I don't know what else to show you there, but other than that the light is changing, so at this point I really should be changing the ND filter because well, I, well, if I didn't want to do that, I can go up to 200 ISO, which bumps it up, but uh, if I wanted to be perfect and to get the most light into the lens, I would leave it at 100 and change the ND filter. I don't know if you want to see that, I can quickly do that, I'll just land it.
forgot to mention that, um, so you can see the compass there. So that, that particular spot, most of this platform, you have compass issues, so I have to go back to the other spot to take off. I forgot to mention that uh, if you lose connection, for whatever reason, the drone will return from where it took off. When I first started flying, I always did that. I always press return to home. I haven't done that for a couple of years. I just always fly it back. I, I just, I want to control it the whole way. Okay, so let's um, turn. So that's the one that the drone came with, which is a clear one. And I've got a, um, a, a 4, 8, 16, and 32. Just turn my phone off, I apologize. Okay, so I start again here. Yeah. So this filter is an ND8, sorry, ND16, um, which is uh, the one I normally use during the day. When it gets to around sunset, you know, late afternoon or you know, whatever, I will use an ND8. And then at sunset, I'll use an ND4. So to be honest, I think um, an ND4 is probably what we should use here now. So we put that on, try not to touch the glass. And uh, I always give it a bit of a clean, just to make sure nothing's on it. Make sure it's 100% clean. And now when we take off, if you, I don't know if you want to see this, but... I think it's about here. If you don't film on log, you sometimes have things overexposed and you can't correct it. Because with normal color, it's what they call 8-bit color which has 800,000, I think it is, or of uh, different colors. If you go to 10 bits, you've got like millions of colors. And um, I'm not sure if I got that right, but basically there's a lot more colors, a lot more dyna dynamic range, so that you can um, fix errors later on in editing. And you also, the colors look a lot smoother as well when you film, lo film and log. So I still got a compass problem here, but uh, just to quickly show you, I'll put the ISO back to 100. And now, although I am a little bit overexposed, we can now fix that through this setting here until I get the histogram where it looks nice. Um, you want to get it around the center. It doesn't matter if you don't get it exactly right because you can fix it later on in editing. But you want to make sure that uh, you've got enough light with no overexposure. So I just have to move the drone. I'm not sure if you want me to take off again or not. Um, yeah. where, where did I take off before? I was lucky to get that spot last time. Yeah, basically, getting that spot is tricky. Oh, here we go, this is it. Nope. Um, try over here. Yeah, you've got to be careful on this platform because it's mostly a steel structure. And I won't take off unless it's 100%. Oh, just what I'll do... I know that the wooden platform is perfect because I, I did a video here for a, a ballet video last year for the Australian Ballet. And we filmed the Australian Ballet dancing on here, so I've flown literally hundreds of flights here. I know this platform really, really well. Okay, just see if it's going to fix it. I'm not sure if it will. Otherwise, we're going to have to go down there. Um, yeah, my favorite time to fly is uh, in the mornings or late afternoons because as you can see now even if you've got very cloudy weather um, may not look the best but from a, a you know photography video point of view it has the best lighting it's just so you can get everything looking fantastic and you can tweak see that at the moment that sun is very bright if you didn't have a log video that would be very hard to correct because if you point the camera at that it'll be all, all blown out and just like look like a white light whereas with log you can actually tone the upper um, 
brightness is down and then bring up the bottom levels so it all looks balanced and looks fantastic. Um, so I'm having a problem here for taking off. One thing you do when you fly is you always do a site survey. You have to work out where, where the obstacles are, where the trees are, where the buildings are. Um, the thing is, you don't want to hit anything and lose your drone. This drone, this costs around $2,600 Australian for the drone. Each battery is over $300. So with all the stuff I've got, it's about 4,000 for the drone thereabouts. The last thing you want to do is smash your drone on the first day you get it. Um, yeah, I'm having a problem here. I don't think you want to show this on your video. But this platform is unique, as I said. Okay, that's a good spot. No problem there. Yeah, it's critical you find a good spot. A few years ago, maybe three, four years ago, I, I got a brand new drone. I made a mistake of taking off here. It took off and smashed into that wooden fence, that wooden chair over there, into pieces. I could not control it. It had a compass calibration issue. Lesson I learned there was two lessons. Don't buy cheap drones <laughs> and never take off if, if, you, if there's any kind of problem with the drone. You, when you take off, you watch it. Any problems, you land straight away uh, because compass calibration issue is a major problem. So, um, yeah, if you wanted to take off from this point, um, yeah, we would stand back. Make sure that the area is clear of people. It's supposed to fly 30 meters away from people. So there's a little bit of drift, but it's okay. It seems to be all right. This drone can fly in winds up to 40, 50 kilometers an hour, even more. Uh, I've flown in very strong wind, and it's just truly remarkable how fantastic the video is. Very stable. That's the benefit of a bigger drone. You can really handle the wind. Um, of course, this pilot doesn't um, do that. All right, so press record take off. Always take off smoothly just to keep an eye on the drone because if it starts doing something crazy you've got to land it straight away. Once you feel it's okay you can... Uh, the reason why it jumped a bit there is because I've got um, avoidance turned on. So I turn that off because the trouble with avoidance is if it feels like there's something in front of it it'll do what it can to avoid it and I lose control of the drone. It might momentarily stop because of a bird or what it thinks is a, something in front of it. And the last thing I want is the uh, drone doing its own thing. So uh, I'll just go for a quick little fly. The histogram is looking really lovely. Lots of good light. And it'll get darker soon, but it looks fantastic. So in fact, I might just spin around and we can do a selfie with a city in the background. Let's bring it. I'll bring it down here. And look at us. Yeah, so I normally I normally watch the drone when I fly. I do look at the screen as well, but only from a positioning point of view. So I'll just bring it down a bit. Get the position right. And we want the city in the background, so I'll just bring it around here a bit. Okay, so the city's in the background. So I just slow. I do everything manually, so I don't use any of the auto modes. The drone can do this automatically, of course. But I typically will just do it myself. That'll be a nice shot. At the moment, the colors on the um, phone look very dull, but that's because it's in what they call the log mode. With log, it's a very flat profile, and you add the color later on. Um, so that's why it looks a little bit dull. If I were to put it in the normal color mode, which I'll show you actually, just turn that off, and just go to uh, here. I can go into normal color, and you can see it looks a lot colorful, a lot more colorful. 
that zebra bit up there shows you that's overexposed. So when you first take off, you might think, oh, this looks better. But when you go to edit it, it's not as good. You have less options to correct things. Um, so I always put it into, you've got black and white as well. Nostalgic, I've never tried that. Um, but yeah, log is the way to go if you really want to get into photography. Um, so actually, even though it's cloudy and uh, it looks fantastic, this will look amazing when we, um, when we edit this later on. I might change the centering. So now I've changed the center to be on that building. And what, what I could do is I can do an orbit around that. Oh, I'll put the recording back on. I can do an orbit around that building. So what you do is you kind of got to get the speed right. Once you lock on, so I'm holding the, the sticks and I've locked onto that building. And now that building is the, okay, not quite 100%, but uh, basically that's what, what you do is you, it takes a bit of practice because the distance you're at and the speed it's flying at will vary how much you move the sticks. Okay, so that's probably enough. But um, we'll just get some nice, what I might do is I'll, I'll come down and I'll fly along the beach. So I'm coming down. <clears throat> yeah, this is a spectacular place here in Melbourne. Princess Pier. The stumps used to uh, be the rest of the pier and when they renovated it or restored it, they basically just restored a section of it and kept the, the rest there for, I guess, for historical reasons, just so you can see uh, how it used to be many years ago when people used to migrate to Australia via ships. Okay, for end, for end, where do people find you? Well, if you want to see uh, some of my work, um, I encourage you to go to YouTube, uh, to, um, do a search on Gizmo Drones, G-I-Z-M-O-D-R-O-N-E-S, Gizmo Drones. Um, you'll find my videos there. I think I've probably got a couple of hundred videos. These days, the last couple of years, I've been doing one a week. Um, I fly pretty much every single day, and uh, usually for someone else or just for myself. And uh, yeah, so please go to Gizmo Drones and uh, check out my channel. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and um, yeah, please check out the rest of my videos. Mm -hmm.